News First, face to face with Charlotte Benedict. Hello there, a very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Face to Face. We're joined this evening by parliamentarian Harshana Rajakaruna from the Samagi Chana Balavegia. Uh, a very good evening, Mr. Rajakaruna, and welcome to the show. Getting right into uh, you know, what's really happening these days, the big discussion nowadays uh, that quite shouldn't be a discussion is which election will come first. Uh, back last year, we had the discussion on when will the election be held. Uh, unfortunately, there was no election, uh, although uh, nominations were called in, lists were submitted, campaigns were started, there was absolutely no election, despite assurances, despite assurances from the governing party that elections will be held on time, despite the parliament allocating money for the local government elections last year, it wasn't held. Now, fast forward to this year. The president himself came out at the start of the year and said, look here, we're having the presidential election first. We're going to have the general election right after that, uh, probably at the, uh, at, the, at the beginning of 2025 or maybe latter stage of 2024. Uh, then now there is this big discussion with uh, the organizer, the, the chair, national organizer of the SLPP, Basil Rajapaksa, bringing to the fore this whole new idea of having the parliamentary election first and then having the presidential election um, According to, well, you know, your understanding of what really is happening here, do you think uh, presidential elections will be held first or...? Uh, so, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, good evening. And uh, regarding elections, okay, like you said, we are supposed to have had the local council elections... Last year. Last year. However, uh, it was unconstitutional and uh, they did not have the elections. So now, 2024, we are talking about two elections, two national elections, uh, the presidential election. Constitutionally, they have to have it hmm. by October. Hmm. Uh, the parliamentary election, the, uh, the executive, the president has the powers, the executive powers to dissolve the parliament. Hmm. Or else, the parliament should put a proposal mm. uh, to dissolve the parliament. So those are the only two ways that a parliament election can mm. be held. Uh, yes, uh, Basil Rajapaksa was pushing for a parliamentary election, but uh, what we get, what we hear and what we get to know is that uh, President is, is uh, hoping to have the presidential election first. Mm. I mean, when it comes to SJB, hmm. us, I mean, we believe that uh, we don't even mind having both elections on the same day. Hmm. I mean, we can save a lot of money hmm. uh, and it is important to have a, a new fresh mandate hmm. for both hmm. because actually if you consider the president he is not with a people's mandate that hmm. he's uh, in that seat. And uh, even the parliament, uh, you know, in, in two, year, two years ago, uh, there was riots all because people were uh, not happy with the, mm. uh, how things were running. And unfortunately, um, we didn't have any elections, but mm. it's the same old people that uh, was led by a new person mm. uh, who's running the country. Hmm. So it is important to have a fresh mandate hmm. uh, when it comes to the presidential uh, as well as the parliamentary election. Hmm. So SJP, we don't mind having both uh, even together. Hmm. Uh, but by the looks of it, I think it will be the presidential election. Hmm. Well, we've seen a lot of, um, for the lack of a better word, crazy things happening uh, during the run-up to an election. We've seen people say a lot of controversial things and it seems like that season has almost started now uh, with the recent statement made by former President Maitri Pala Sirisena when he claimed that he knows the exact people who were behind uh, the Easter Sunday attacks. Now, um, the former president has given a statement uh, to the CID, but of course this is uh, such a revelation coming uh, from none other than the mouth of the president at the time 
the attacks took place is cause for concern. It was uh, traumatizing maybe even to uh, the victims and, and the loved ones of the victims who, who uh, lost their loved ones in the attacks uh, when they find out that uh, the president at the time now really knows who these, um, you know, masterminds are. Do you think there is any truth to this statement? Was it just banter? Was it just another political statement that popped up? What is your take on this? I was quite surprised to hear what he had to say. At first, I was wondering why did you just not say it before? Hmm. Then he came and covered... Uh, Clarified. It's saying, yeah, that, saying uh, that he got He only found what, out about it three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Hmm. So even three weeks was quite a long time, I hmm. think, uh, for, uh, for a person like that. Uh, just to not mention it to the authorities. Mm. And the first thing he should have done was not in, more than even coming into media, uh, that he should have gone to the police. Mm. And what he said was that he should be called by the judiciary. I mean, mm. That's not how it works. I he mean, said that he doesn't know about the law, he doesn't really understand where he should go. I'm, I'm sure he doesn't know a lot of things, but, uh, but I'm sure he can get advice. Hmm. from people and, uh, and, and find out what he can do. Hmm. Because he, he is a former president. He's hmm. a, he should be a responsible person uh, or hmm. a more responsible person. Hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't trust him. Hmm. I, I, um, I'm, I know we, we uh, helped him and voted Supported for him, him yes. and uh, made him the president, which I... Uh, regret sometimes uh, but however I mean if there is something valid mm. I think it's very positive mm. but I don't personally have any trust in his words mm. so uh, I, I, I hope that uh, you know the authorities will take action mm. and because it's high time I mean it's overdue mm. uh, what has happened uh, so many years ago, mm. uh, we have to, you know, keep uh, whoever who did this terrorist activity accountable. Mm. And uh, I, SJB, we believe that mm. we need to take uh, the support of specialists locally as well as internationally mm. to find out who's behind this terrorist attack. Mm. And and uh, uh, because so far for so many years mm. we have not been able to find it out mm. and e therefore i think it's uh, I I that we need uh, international support in this mm. but um, when you take a look at the history of you know how these kind of incidents have been dealt with not just terrorist attacks alone take for example uh, the incident in mithotamulla nobody even really talks about it now it was there was negligence involved there in how um, this garbage dump was managed. There were protests by the people who were living there. And at the end of the day, many people lost their lives. That's just one incident. Uh, then you have the incident in Ratupasala. There are many other incidents just, that just continue to go unaddressed. Um, what does the SJB plan on doing differently in trying in, to bring some closure, at least, at the very least, some closure, uh, to the victims and to the loved ones of the victims of not only the Easter Sunday attack, but also those other incidents as well. Yeah, I, I think mainly the Easter Sunday attack, you know, even uh, the incumbent president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, when mm -hmm. he, uh, he addressed uh, in parliament, as far as I can remember, he did mention that uh, he's going to get assistance from Scotland Yard. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't think that he has come anywhere close to Scotland Yard or, mm. or made a request officially or nothing like that. Why do you think that is? So, so I mean, that's uh, that's uh, surprising part of it. I mean, you, you, I believe that we can easily get the international support in this, mm. and Scotland Yard is one option, mm. and uh, and I'm sure uh, that uh, we can get. Mm. assistance and SJB mm. will definitely get assistance from the international uh, authorities, international community because uh, we believe that uh, that you know there should be s that's the least thing we can do 
Hmm. I mean, we, I mean, not only for East attack, but hmm. East attack is a, a significant uh, issue that we need to, uh, uh, you know, rectify. Hmm. And uh, yeah, we are we are very confident, and and, and our party we have uh, decided, and our uh, leader Sajid Premdasar, the opposition leader, I think. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday or today, mm. even he did mention that uh, uh, he will get assistance from the mm. international authorities, and we will do so. Mm. But these promises to you know bring criminals to book, uh, you know, do justice for all the past wrongs that were done. Um, there have been many scams that have taken place in Sri Lanka. Um, there has been no justice up until date. So. People take these promises of, you know, justice and all that with a pinch of salt. And there might be many who are watching the program right now even saying, you know, I, I'm not going to buy it. So what kind of assurances can you give them? So you have to... Uh, okay. Now, SJB and Sajid Premadas, eh? UMP and Ranil Vikram Singh. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's clear that there's some involvement with SLPP, uh, uh, Rajapaksas mm. in this. Mm. So there was a talk about this happened to bring Gotabe Rajapaksa into power and so on. Mm. So what you need to compare is Ranil Vikramasinghe who is supported and protected by the Rajapaksas and the SLPP, whether, they, whether he will find the truth mm. or uh, SJB, hmm. who has no connection or alliance or dependence with SLPP hmm. or Rajapaksas, hmm. uh, who would uh, who make would a make a make a justice. make a better uh, effort to find out what really happened. Hmm. So I I am very confident hmm. that e even the public will believe when we say. Hmm. When Sajip Premadasa and the SJB say that we will find out the truth because mm. we have no affiliation, no dependence, uh, uh, or no one to protect. That would have usually been the case, uh, as in the two parties that you mentioned, two factions. Um, it's always been a kind of a dual system in Sri Lankan politics. But um, if you go through even print media, and, and, and other reports that are coming out, uh, this presidential election is slated to be a, a, a three-way contest. So what do you have to say about uh, the other party, the new party that has entered the fray and now is competing, some might claim, even neck to neck, who make, who make the same promise? They say we have absolutely no affiliation with Ranil Vikramasinghe. He was never our leader. Uh, we have no affiliation with the SLPP either. So what if they say that we are a better party to give justice or to do justice? I don't believe that uh, uh, JVP-led alliance uh, will be able to deliver. Hmm. Uh, there, there is the same old team. They have put NPP uh, uh, to cam camouflage the JVP mm. and the history be behind the JVP. Mm. But still the decision makers are the JVP leaders. So there's absolutely nothing called NPP. It's just to camouflage uh, <coughs> what they have done in the past. Mm. So the JVP, whether they have <coughs> delivered, whether they can deliver, a big <coughs> question mark. And I don't believe that people will take the risk mm. because, I mean, there is, uh, uh, I mean, me, you know, I'm sure there might be a, an increase in their percentage <laughs> from 3% to, say, 15% or so. Mm. And that is a significant jump. Mm. So they must be feeling that, oh, <coughs> they would have, they are almost there. Mm. I mean, because from 3%, when you say, 15%, mm. it's five you know, times five, 500 times, five, five, five times more, 500% mm. mm. more. Uh, so obviously they must be feeling 
uh, you know, that they are almost there. But more than that, I don't believe that they have a team. Hmm. I mean, with that NPP, they can probably mention less than 10 people who people know of. Hmm. So without a team, hmm. uh, I don't believe uh, that uh, you know they can deliver. And and I believe we have an honest, hardworking leader, hmm. Sajid Premadasa, the opposition leader who has delivered when he was a minister, when he was a, a cabinet minister, when he was an opposition leader. Hmm. And also with him, there's a credible team. You know, if you look at our economic tape, Harsha Iran Kabir, if you look at our, the rest, the, the young crowd that is in that, hmm. I, I believe uh, uh, SJB has the best uh, leader as well as the best team. Hmm. And you can't compare that with any other political party in Sri Lanka. So world. when speaking about you know democracy in Sri Lanka and, and, and how our leaders have come and gone, uh, we've tried this for 75 years and, and today we're suffering the repercussions. Not saying that all leaders were bad or everything that every leader did was wrong. There were uh, good leaders, there were wrong things done by good leaders, there were right things done by good leaders, there were uh, right things done by bad leaders, there were wrong things done by bad leaders. So it's, it's a big mix, but what's important is that we foster this culture of democracy. Now, we saw uh, uh, the Tamil parties in the north, uh, they had an election where 300 of their members voted, uh, similar to maybe, or, or, or at least just partially, taking from maybe how the system in US works when it comes to selecting a party leader or a candidate for a presidential election. We don't really see that amongst other major parties, if you will, in Sri Lanka, like the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, uh, the SLFP, the UNP, the SJB. It's, it's always uh, there is a leader. Uh, he becomes president. He becomes, uh, you know, takes top office in the country. And then he might at times refuse to leave or, or there's a struggle for the leadership and then another person comes and it's that person's selection that just goes on. There is absolutely no democracy in parties. So do you believe that uh, SJB is any different and, and do you believe that culture of democracy should be maybe fostered a little bit more among the major political parties in Sri Lanka? So I, I really think that uh, which was done in TNA, I think yes. it was, uh, Tamil National Alliance uh, internal election that yes. happened was uh, 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 quite a uh, uh, f uh, first time probably I saw I think, it. Yeah, yeah, in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. I think that was uh, great. Hmm. And uh, I believe uh, most of our political parties hmm. uh, don't have internal democracy. Hmm. I mean, JVP, uh, UMP, we never had, uh, I was in, hmm. in, in UMP, so I know. I that's, one of the, that's one of the major complaints for forming the SJB exactly. as well. Exactly. So in, in the SJB, uh, the democracy uh, uh, where we uh, learn from the UMP, hmm. uh, so was, uh, I mean, that was a main reason that we formed the SJB. Hmm. So there is an annual process, unlike hmm. the uh, UMP, how it was. Hmm. So, uh, but this is something that I think Sri Lanka uh, should uh, think about and rectify. Mm. I believe that most of the political parties should have a process where you have in US or any other uh, countries. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the case. But uh, uh, now, when it comes to the SJB, I think it's far better than what we had. Hmm. But the UNP. I still believe that there's more uh, that we can work on. Hmm. But usually what we see in Sri Lanka is that these kind of topics, you know, internal democracy in parties, they're all discussed at uh, cusp of an election. And right after the election, you know, come dawn the next day, everything is forgotten. You know, it's hunky-dory. Whoever won, you know, will enjoy the spoils of the war and, and, and rule the country for the next five, four years. Uh, but... Do you think there is actually room this time around for something substantial to happen, at least in that, in that perspective? So that's this is the thing. To be realistic, if you win, hmm. it's uh, very much less that you will uh, question uh, 
Hmm. But if you lose, hmm. then only you start questioning the uh, internal democracy and hmm. other hmm. internal processes. Hmm. So that is the reality. Hmm. Uh, but I, I, I believe that there should be more uh, time spent and, you know, we, we really don't have that internal democracy in most of the political parties. Hmm. And that is something that, uh, as a country as uh, we should uh, look into. Hmm. So again, speaking about the election, uh, this time, like I said before, people are saying it's, it's going to be a, a three-way contest. If I may, you know, may blankly ask you, who do you think the uh, biggest competition for the SJB is at this election? Uh, so far, I, I think uh, in JVP-led NPP has some sort of uh, campaign is done, hmm. is happening. Hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I think they are the only party that has started some sort of political activity hmm. with the SJB. To campaign for the election? Yes. Okay. So other political parties have not done any. Hmm. So the UMP did one rally, I think. Mm. I mean, they have brought everybody from the whole country and had one election in one 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 really? meeting in mm. uh, 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 Kuliya Yes, and uh, where he actually criticised several uh, political parties, including uh, the SJB. Yes, yes, <laughs> and uh, then, uh, but he, he had again, you know, done only one mm. uh, rally. Mm. So, uh, SLPP has not done a single. Hmm. So, um, so I believe that uh, only two ac active political parties are uh, SJB hmm. and NPP. Hmm. Well, speaking about uh, another major uh, political event or an event that was supposed to be about uh, the workers in Sri Lanka but has now come to a point where it's transformed into a political statement, if you will. Uh, the May Day Rally is what I'm talking about. Uh, many view this uh, May Day Rally as uh, you know, an expression of their political power, their, uh, their status uh, at the time. And, and, and we have uh, the 1st of, of May coming up, the May Day Rally. Uh, SJB has started planning already? or Yes, so I'm also in the committee hmm. of uh, organizing uh, the steering committee of the May Day. And we are hoping to have it in Colombo. Hmm. Uh, we uh, have not made the announcement yet, hmm. so that uh, I won't go into detail. But hmm. we are going to bring the largest. Uh, we're going to make sure that it's the largest rally hmm. uh, done by any political party, and uh, uh, so it's going to be over hundred thousand uh, supporters hmm. uh, coming into Colombo. Hmm. So it's going to be. Uh, a huge event and mm. that will show our strength. Mm. Uh, we have already done quite a lot of uh, meetings uh, uh, in, in the recent past, from mm. 2024. Mm. We had a very successful youth district meeting in Kurunagala. Mm. We had a, a couple of uh, 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 women's rallies, one in Kandy and one in uh, Gaul. Mm. Uh, so we are having uh, a professionals meeting, uh, then we are having another uh, women's rally in Badulla mm. uh, next weekend, mm. and we are having another youth rally in Kegol, mm. uh, and the May Day, uh, obviously, on mm. the 1st of May. Uh, so, I mean, we, we, there's a, a lot that we have been doing, and we are quite confident that uh, uh, we can win the next election, whether it's the presidential or the parliamentary election. This time around, of course, uh, given what Sri Lankans have suffered, they will be looking a little bit more closer at the policies that the SJB uh, is, is, is planning on implementing uh, once uh, or if they win the election and assume power uh, and the general public will be more inclined to keep the SJB, uh, to take the SJB to, to, to book if those policies are not followed. So around when do you think the SJB will be releasing their policy document uh, for 
whichever election that comes first. So our economic policy is being discussed mm. already, mm. Uh, the economic blueprint. Okay. So we are actually, uh, we launched it uh, about a year and a half ago. Mm. And you'll have been keep, keep, uh, keep on updating it. Exactly, we yeah. have been keeping, uh, keep updating it and also it's tomorrow we have it in Ratnapura. Mm. Uh, so l last uh, few weeks ago we had it in Matra and so mm. on. Mm. So the economic uh, re uh, program is being discussed. Mm. But the overall uh, election manifesto mm. will come close to the election. Mm. So uh, we have been um, forming few committees mm. uh, headed by Iran Vikramaratna mm. and uh, proposals have been discussed mm. so uh, the final product will will happen close to the election mm. and um, well of course when speaking about what will happen after the election it's 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 uh, there's a higher probability especially uh, at, a, at a general election if it comes first or even if it does come second uh, with what Sri Lankans experienced by just handing over uh, unfettered power two-thirds majority at a general election to the SLPP in the 2019 uh, election um, the people are here now uh, partially because of certain decisions that they made uh, and having given one political party unfettered power like that and suffering a consequence like this, it's more likely than not that the next parliament uh, will not be, uh, or, or one party will not get absolute power in parliament, will not get the two-thirds majority. It was anyway an off chance, and especially after a, after a predicament like this, it's highly unlikely that the people will make that choice again. So... Um, despite of how many seats that the SJB wins at the general election, um, what kind of political movements will the SJB willing, be willing to work with? So I, I personally believe that, yes, having two-thirds is mm. not necessary. Mm. I think you need two-thirds when you want to make a, a, a constitutional change. Mm. And that constitutional change, uh, if it's pro-country, mm the whole parliament will support yes and at least the two-thirds uh, we should be able mm. to uh, uh, get if it's a good amendment mm. so uh, I mean uh, I we are hoping that we will get the majority mm. and uh, we are confident that we will get the majority and if we need to get two-thirds mm. and uh, it will all depend on the amendment Mm. And and all the constitutional change that we will, we are looking to do, mm. and uh, we will discuss with the whole parliament. Mm. And uh, uh, if it's pro country, uh, we are confident that we will be able to get the support of other opposition parties also. Mm. Because despite what uh, anyone really thinks of the current members in parliament or whichever political parties they support, come a general election and new members of parliament uh, are elected. Uh, whoever members of parliament are elected are elected by the people and therefore uh, they do have a mandate uh, once they enter parliament and of course at this time of great economic turmoil in our country it's important that our leaders also work together uh, despite sharing different views. Thank you very much uh, parliamentarian Ashan Rajakarana from the Samagi Balavegia for joining us this evening on Face to Face. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode. Until we meet again, take care and God bless. Thank you.